In this tutorial, we are going to demonstrate how to configure basic actions. And by actions, I am referring to message actions that have a trigger and then an action. For the purposes of this video, I've already pre-configured two widgets. On the left, we have a list widget. This list widget is connected to the points of interest layer that is found within the map. And all of the records within the points of interest layer are listed here. Uh, the, the portions of the attribute table that we're showing through dynamic text are the name of the point of interest and whether or not there are any details listed with that point of interest. In the map, we have the full points of interest map, which includes the uh, many layers of which one of those is the layer that we've connected to the list. Now let's say we want this list to filter based on the extent that our users are zooming to within the map. And this happens at runtime. So if we want that to happen, then we will click on the map, we'll go to actions, and we'll add a trigger that says when the extent changes, we want the framework of a data set. Uh, framework basically re refers to a data source. So when the extent changes, we want the framework of a data set to filter the records. So our action data is then going to be the points of interest layer that we also have connected to our list on the left. So the conditions are already set um, because the, the application already understands that it's the same layer and it will understand that as we're zooming in and we're seeing less of those points within the extent of our map, that it knows which ones it will filter in the list. I'm gonna go ahead and save this and then put this on live view. And I am going to zoom into this location here. You can see on the left that the list has now filtered by the three points of interest that I have in my map extent. So that's one way that we can create an action based on a user's interaction with a map. And I will show one other action that we can do um, just for the purposes of this demonstration. There are many, but these are some of the most common that users want to be able to have happen when they are using an application at runtime. So if we want a user to be able to find a, a feature from the list, click on that feature in the list and have the map automatically select and zoom to that feature, then we need to be clicked on the list and we need to be over in the action panel of the configuration settings for the list. And we'll add a trigger that says when the user selects a record, so the record selection changes, then we want the map to zoom to that record. Now we can create a, a custom extent or we can leave it as automatic, whatever it is that you, that you wanna do. And I'm going to add one more action that the framework selects that data record as well. And when that data record is selected, um, we need to add the trigger data, which is the data where the user is selecting here, where they are clicking on an item from this list. Uh, and then the action data is also going to be that same data set, but within the map. And so we'll choose that data set from the map layers of our map widget. And as you can see, the map, the experience builder already understands which records go with which because it's the same data, data layer. I'm going to save this and go to live view. And then I'm going to click on warm lake. And you can see that now that record was selected within the list, within the map, and it also zoomed to that location within the map. So those are some of the most basic actions that users are looking for when they're using your resources in the map applications that you create. So if you wanted to be able to relate tables, so you want to be able to select an item from the list and then you want that action to occur on a different data source that has a same unique ID, then you have to create that related tables interaction through this trigger and action framework. So if I were to click on this framework, 
you can see that my trigger data is the points of interest data. If my action data were another, another data source that has unique IDs that match with my trigger data, then I would choose that action data source. And then I would create that related tables interaction under the conditions. So I'm gonna go ahead and just select another data source. Uh, this data source won't have the same unique ID, but it'll just show you where you would then select those unique IDs to create that related records interaction. So here is where I would choose a unique ID from the trigger data. And here is where I would choose a unique ID from the action data. And this is how you can create an interaction between data sources that are not the same data, but have the same unique IDs.